be before I uh, start to talk about the specific solutions that uh, Hamilton is offering uh, for for these tests, um, I wanted to uh, start off by sorry, someone is uh, not muted. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to start off to talk a little bit about uh, how Hamilton was impacted by uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, because as you may know, uh, not only do we produce um, uh, robots for uh, laboratories, we also produce uh, ventilators, among other things. And you can imagine that both of these uh, products were in high demand when, uh, when the pandemic uh, started. And then again, uh, I guess all of us were um, affected more or less by the specific lockdowns. And that, of course, was a, a real um, challenge to um, because we actually had to increase uh, the production while everyone was supposed to stay at home. So you can imagine that that wasn't so easy. And uh, my colleagues in Switzerland, which is our main production site for uh, um, the not American part of the world, um, they immediately had to go into a 24-7 uh, uh, production in, in three shifts and they acquired more than 7,000 hours of overtime in the past um, in the past three months since uh, the lockdown uh, went into effect in Switzerland. So by doing that, uh, they were able to um, increase the, the, the output uh, of Hamilton and Bonadutz to more than 400 systems um, that have been delivered and installed in the past three months uh, for coronavirus testing. So these systems have been uh, delivered to more than uh, 20 countries, including South Africa. Um, and that's only for the part that uh, Hamilton Bonadutz is uh, responsible for. So we have a similar amount of systems that have been produced in Reno, our main headquarters in the US, and they, they are delivering systems uh, to the US and, and South America. So I'm, I'm oversimplifying a little bit when I say that each of these 400 systems uh, is capable of testing a thousand persons per day because obviously this one system is not uh, used to to do the test from from a to z but uh, in general uh, uh, around about a thousand tests can be performed with each of the systems and that means with the 400 systems that we were able to deliver in the past uh, three months the complete canton of grisons which is the part where uh, hamilton is located in in uh, switzerland could be tested in in less than one day and to give you a little bit more perspective that is more relatable um, that would mean that we could test uh, the population of johannesburg in uh, just two and a half days with these uh, 400 systems so to get a little bit more into the specifics what type of um, systems we were able um, to to deliver uh, i want to start off with a little overview so we have basically two main areas one is the viral strain and acute uh, infection testing on top and then um, as we progressed in the pandemic of course antibody response testing uh, was an important field that came up um, later and for the viral strain and acute infection testing um, of course we start off uh, uh, with uh, body fluid that uh, um, comes to the system and then we need to uh, extract um, the viral RNA and then do a, a qPCR setup or um, in some cases also next generation sequencing um, has been used to detect the, the virus strains. And as you can see here in this overview, we have uh, four systems in this uh, in this upper part for the acute testing which is the MACX Starlet and the Nimbus Presto. Both of, both of these systems uh, are used to extract viral RNA from, uh, from samples. And then um, you have to imagine this, um, basically the result is the, is the purified RNA that then can be used for the qPCR uh, or the sequencing. And th this is interchangeable. So the Nimbus Presto, of course, uh, the RNA can also be used uh, in the on the PCR prep starlet, which is the number three, and would be um, the next um, the next step in that, which basically uh, 
is using the the RNA and and preparing the the qPCR reaction to go on the dedicated systems for testing. And then what we'll also be talking about um, uh, specifically Patrick because our antibody response testing is based on the Michael Advantage liquid handling system um, uh, because this is the the high throughput uh, system that is uh, also able to to uh, work with third party systems um, easily and that's the the lower part so basically this is the um, um, antibody testing we also have a smaller solution uh, based on the starlet uh, but this is uh, for very low throughput and and not really suited for most of most of the labs Okay, so to give you a little bit uh, more detail um, about uh, the systems, I'll start off uh, with uh, Nimbus Presto, which is a system um, that is in our portfolio for quite a long system. It's a, a quite a long time. It's an SA ready workstation, which means uh, it's uh, pre-configured. As you can see on the left side, there's the Kingfisher Presto from uh, Thermo integrated on the platform. It's uh, fully closed uh, if you close the front door. Um, which is, of course, also a security benefit. And um, it also comes with qualified methods, which means uh, you have very little um, uh, time to actually get up and running. So it's a fully automated nucleic acid extraction and uh, can also be used for protein purification. Even though it's a very compact uh, footprint, you can process up to 96 samples at a time. And as I already said, and you can see here on the left side, the Kingfisher Presto is uh, fully integrated in this uh, enclosed platform. And we have the qualified methods. So there are a couple of uh, partner um, companies that we work with uh, in regards to this, um, to this um, qualified method, methods, which is, uh, for example, Macherei Nagel, as you can see, the nuclear mag pathogen RNA and DNA isolation kit is automated on this system. Then also uh, we work together with Thermo Fisher and uh, Omega Biotech is a partner of ours and uh, also Promega. Um, then the next system, which is basically uh, in, the, in the same um, uh, field of work. It's also for the extraction of the viral RNA that uh, was um, actually um, brought up when the pandemic started because we had uh, some delivery problems with the Kingfisher Presto. So we needed uh, also um, an alternative to um, purify the viral RNA. And that is basically a system that's based on the star line. Uh, <clears throat> and it's also a little bit higher throughput because as you may be able to see here on the left side the system has a 96 head which uh, speeds up the process a little bit and you can see below the the um, workflow of the system so the lysis is um, in most cases done off the system because obviously you have to um, um, take uh, into account the security precautions if you're working with uh, viral material so most of the labs do the lysis uh, off deck and not on the system but optionally you could do it on the system and then basically uh, you have the complete nucleic acid extraction uh, workflow on the system um, it's magnetic bead based that's why it's called MagX from magnetic extraction also you can use up to 96 samples uh, at a time and we are not uh, limited to a specific kit chemistry. Um, 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 it's uh, similar to the Nimbus Presto, so we are open to basically any um, kit chemistry, but obviously we also uh, partnered with um, some other companies, which I'll show you on the next slide. And as I said, you could have the optional lyser step on the same system. So in terms of uh, partner companies uh, or kits that uh, we already have pre-programmed on the system, it's basically in part the same um, as on the Nimbus Presto just before, but we also uh, work together with Simo uh, Research uh, for their viral MACB kit. Um, and again, Promega. So uh, moving on to the next step, now that we have the viral um, RNA, um, or the, the sample that potentially uh, um, 
uh, contains the viral RNA, we need to do the PCR preparation in order to really uh, put the sample on, on um, the qPCR machine. And our system to do that is the PCR prep starlet. As you can see uh, here uh, on the green workflow below the system, so you uh, load the illusion plate, master mix and controls, and then basically the system um, does everything um, until you have the final plate that you can put in the qPCR machine. And here we um, <clears throat> we uh, focused on uh, using CDC and FDA cleared as well as um, uh, WHO recommended testing kits. And uh, they are also coming from Thermo Fisher, uh, Biosearch Technologies, uh, and also IDT. And then there's one other system that I didn't mention on the on the overview slide uh, before, that um, some of our customers been using um, for uh, the testing, and that is um, the RT Starlet, which. Uh, is a system that has an on-deck uh, qPCR machine, which are the two red systems on the left side that you can see here. So basically, in this case, uh, you can even run the qPCR on the system without manual interaction. And um, um, the, the reason why I'm only mentioning it uh, as a as a side uh, product here is that it's um, low to medium throughput, so it's not really uh, suited for, for a high throughput uh, testing capacity. You can also do optional nucleic acid extraction on the same system, so then you, have, you would have a complete uh, workflow. As I said, it has an integrated qPCR system, or in this case, uh, even two, which is the MIG for Hamilton. And um, as I said, it's uh, up to medium throughput. And um, with that, um, I conclude all the systems that are in these upper part uh, for the for the um, acute testing. And we get to the next part, which is the antibody testing. And to present uh, this uh, Vantage solution, I um, hand over to my colleague Patrick in Switzerland. So, Patrick, you should be able to. Yes. But we can't hear you. Hello? Yes, now we can hear you. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Excellent. <clears throat> um, sorry for that. I was pretty much talking for a while. So <laughs> thanks a lot for uh, the opportunity to talk about um, the Hamilton solutions in this webinar. Uh, thanks to separations. Uh, again, can everybody, Jeff Verlinden uh, and everybody else, can they mute themselves? That would be very much appreciated. Um, so I'm here to talk about the ELISA Vantage Dynamic Duo. Uh, quick introduction here, you can see two systems. One is the uh, Vantage Pre-Diluter system and the other one is the ELISA processor. Um, the, well, very generic um, workflow of the of both of these systems can be seen at the lower end. So we have a diluter, which obviously is just there to dilute system, uh, samples. We have used these diluted samples then on the actual processor. I um, would like to <coughs> quickly touch on the actual systems. Um, the diluter system is 
basically there to scan all the barcodes of your primary tubes, um, have all the required reagents on board or dilution factors on board, and then do the dilution from tube to, uh, into plates. Uh, on this system here, we also can see um, some labware handling devices. So we have um, entry exit modules, which are essentially stacks of plates. So you can do uh, long walkaway runs with a lot of labware on board. Um, needless to say, somebody needs to get fresh samples onto the systems and output um, MTPs from the system to retrieve them from the system in order to put them onto the processor uh, system and the downstream workflow. Set processor system looks like this as well. This is uh, an example of a two meter Vantage um, sporting also so-called entry exit modules, that's plate stacks and tip stacks. Um, we have um, 10 incubation stations here in HECO. Um, a um, biotech washer and reader, we'll get into that in just a second. And <clears throat> we also have um, pre-programmed workflows for the one, for, the, for two of the current um, testing assays for COVID-19 antibodies. This can actually run up to 6,500 samples in, in 24 hours. Um, with all the labware on board, you can do that pretty much walk away. Uh, eventually, again here, somebody needs to go and <laughs> probably empty waste bins and, and replenish with uh, new tips and plates. Looking at the actual integration real quick, um, that's the lower left section here on the system. Um, this is what it looks like if you were standing in, uh, on the back of the instrument. We have uh, a set biotech washer and reader integrated as SILA devices, and we have 10 in HECO positions for incubation. All of these positions are accessed by the so-called track gripper, that is a um, plate manipulation device or lab transportation device integrated into the Vantage, I recommend you um, check out our other material for that. This is how it would be integrated on a system like that. Of course, these are all uh, interchangeable uh, if need be. Currently, we have pre-programmed assay data for a BioRAD and a Neuromean um, assay. Um, this are pre-programmed as said before, they're delivered as a skeleton run, so to say, so you have a template to start from, and you would then do with your, um, on, on site, you would do your installation. <clears throat> Which brings me to the last point. Um, again, pre-programmed skeleton assays, meaning that your local application specialist would get this data from us, this programming data, and then would adapt it to your needs on site uh, in terms of throughput, in terms of labware, in terms of location of, of uh, third party devices. Uh, should you um, require or should you already have a different, say, photometer on site, you can also use that one. These are not like fixed configurations, so one part number equals that exact configuration. Uh, these are merely suggestions for configurations to um, perform these ELISA assays. Um, so if you were to get one of those, it would be configured. It could also be configured as a benchtop application, um, uh, as a smaller system, like the 1.3 meter system versus the two meter that you saw. Um, you can uh, scale it up using more than uh, eight channels, or if you have lower throughputs, you could use less than that. You don't need a uh, multi pro pad, or you can combine the two assays, uh, of course, at the cost of throughput, um, but winning, obviously, space in your lab um, might be more cost efficient for you, etc. cetera. Um, a verification and validation would happen on, on site in no matter what uh, system configuration you would get. Um, we prepare everything. It is built and tested, of course, beforehand, but it all happens in, in the actual lab with obviously actual samples. That was already it from the Hamilton part of the presentation. Um, if you like to get more information, needless to say, speak to our uh, hosts here at Separations or um, reach out to ourselves in 
Switzerland and Germany, respectively. Thanks a lot. Perfect. Thank you, Patrick. Um, if there are any questions, can you please post them in the chat box, just to ensure that we don't have everyone um, asking questions at the same time? Yes, I don't see any questions. So it looks like we're going to hand over then to, to you, Manu. Let's... Okay, perfect. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, can you all see the screen? Yes, we can see it perfectly. Okay, perfect. So thank you for inviting me to present. So today I will be discussing about using NGS for SARS-CoV-2 surveillance and basically what are the advantages to use NGS uh, in this uh, in this pandemic. So sequencing based surveillance basically provides a unique advantage in uh, fighting COVID-19. So first, uh, the sequencing and Illumina technology has been used uh, to identify originally the SARS-CoV-2 uh, virus as the virus causing the cluster of respiratory illnesses in Wuhan in China. And it is necessary to track the transmission route of the virus globally. It can determine how quickly the virus is adapting as it spreads, also identifies targets for therapies, and it's also required to uh, to understand the role of co-infections in the outcome of the disease. So first, I would like to 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 differentiate two notions here that uh, that I will be uh, discussing. So between diagnostic testing and surveillance. So diagnostic testing is uh, providing really important yes no answer for individual patients, and that's the answer that's been that's being used to define uh, uh, the appropriate management that can be provided. Surveillance, on the other hand, is what will help uh, public health officials to track the path of the epidemics, understand transmission routes, uh, determine uh, the rate of viral evolution as well as understand whether the virus is changing in ways that can impact the therapeutic, okay? So, uh, so yes, NGS can basically provide uh, information beyond what you can get without CQPCR. Uh, it will inform you whether the virus has mutated, that will provide guidance uh, on the PCR-based testing revision, uh, provide guidance for vaccine targets as well. Uh, it will inform on the virus route and the transmission. So that's what you have in here in, on the slide. So from the KZ database, uh, it will uh, give you in, insights on uh, the, the speed of uh, evolution of the virus and, and co-infection. So what I will be uh, discussing mainly today are three uh, of our solutions. Uh, that we have uh, to to sequence the the SARS-CoV-2 genome. So the first approach is metagenomics, where you basically sequence virus from complete RNA-seq library. The other one is enrichment-based, so basically starting from RNA-seq uh, library and then enriching for viral sequences. And the last one is more uh, is amplicon, so basically uh, PCR amplification of the viral genome with overlapping amplicon from the cDNA. So all techniques have their advantages as well as some drawbacks. So if you look at, for example, metagenomics, it, uh, it has the benefit of providing uh, host response information, but on the other hand, it will require a really high number of reads compared to targeted approaches. If you look at enrichment, the, the panel that we have that I will describe later on uh, targets also other respiratory viruses, so it's really important to, to inform on co-infections. As you might know, uh, in 21% 20 uh, of the cases, there are co-infections uh, with other respiratory viruses. And that has an impact on on uh, on the outcome, and and then the amplicon approach will only focus on SARS-CoV-2 genome and not other viruses. So of course, it will require less number of reads per sample, but on the other hand, uh, you can have possible amplicon dropouts with the evolution of the virus. Okay. 
So if we look at the metagenomic approach, uh, as I mentioned, it will uh, sequence the whole RNA of the sample, so both uh, the virus as well as the host, so it's full RNA-seq library. Uh, because of that, it will require a high number of reads, so from 10 million reads, if you only want to focus on the virus, up to 50 million reads per sample if you also want to look at uh, the host response. Of course, you could go with a lower number of reads if, for example, you were working from viral culture instead of swabs because you wouldn't have the host RNA, uh, uh, let's say, contaminating the sample. Okay, so from this analysis, you would uh, then align the reads to a comprehensive viral database to be able to distinguish between viral species such as other coronaviruses or uh, other uh, respiratory viruses, for example. Um, and, and then, of course, as I mentioned, you can perform RNA-seq analysis of the host response. Um, there are also publications that you can see here from, from Nature Microbiology, where you can increase the viral detection sensitivity by spiking some primers uh, to enrich the virus during the reverse transcription step. So if we look at the overall workflow, um, basically you start uh, from collecting swab sample, you would then extract your RNA um, and prepare the library then from the RNA that you converted to cDNA to then prepare your library. Um, in terms of sequencing, as I mentioned, uh, it, it requires a certain amount of reads. So the, you would need uh, enough throughput on the instrument. So from Illumina, the instrument, it would be, uh, the best fit would be from Nexic or Novasic, which is our higher throughput platform. And then we have some analysis solution. So for analysis reporting, as well as data sharing, but I will describe these on a, on a later slide. The second approach um, is the enrichment approach. So as I mentioned, it's, uh, it, it's covering uh, other respiratory viruses. So it provides highest resolution with full virus genome sequence. It's using our library that is called Nexaflex for enrichment. So you would basically be doing uh, double-stranded cDNA from nasal swab, uh, then use Bidling transposome library prep, so our Nextera, to, uh, to generate a, a whole genome uh, library. And then uh, with some spe specific probes, you would enrich your library uh, with the viral sequences, okay? So the workflow looks as follow. Again, you start with the collection of the swab. Uh, you can do either RNA uh, extraction or total nucleic acid extractions because uh, the panel also targets some DNA viruses, not only RNA viruses. So you can extract the total uh, nucleic acid. Uh, once the total, total nucleic acid is extracted, you would uh, generate cDNA and then you use this cDNA to prepare the library and then enrich the library uh, with the respiratory viruses using our panel, okay? Then sequencing, as I mentioned, is as it is targeted, you can use uh, any of our benchtop instruments depending on, the, on your need in terms of throughput. So it can be IC100 to, uh, to Novasic. Um, then in terms of analysis, again, the same uh, similar apps as a, as a with the previous workflow, but I will describe that later on. So a bit more information on the on the enrichment panel. Uh, it, co it contains uh, almost uh, 8,000 probes uh, to detect common respiratory viruses, a recent flu strain uh, as and SARS-CoV-2 uh, virus. Um, also, we have uh, human probes in, the, in this uh, panel to act as a positive control. So um, this panel has basically been published, uh, I think it was in, 28, in 2018, yes. And we have basically uh, optimized this panel to add uh, viruses such as SARS-CoV-2, as well as some additional strains of influenza A or influenza B. Uh, you also have, uh, so all the common flu, you have parainfluenza viruses as well, okay? So then the, the third approach is Amplicon. So the, our Amplicon approach is AmpliSeq for Illumina SARS-CoV-2. Uh, 
uh, community panel. It's a panel that uh, covers 247 applicants. So that covers, again, the full uh, sequence of SARS-CoV-2, but no other viruses, okay? So it's really targeted at, uh, at the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which does not require a lot of, uh, of reads per sample, roughly uh, 250,000 reads per sample which is much lower than the other approaches. So in terms of workflow, uh, again, swab, uh, swab collection, then RNA extraction and cDNA synthesis, library prep, of course, and then you would run on any benchtop uh, instrument, okay? And then analysis, again, uh, similar apps, and that's what I'm gonna describe in the, in the next uh, slide. So for the data analysis, we have launched what we call the Illumina SARS-CoV-2 NGS data toolkit uh, that is available either on the cloud, so our base space sequence hub solution, or can be also available on uh, our server. So these apps, uh, be, to support the pandemic, we made them free of charge until the end of October, and we have two apps for data analysis. So one is the Dragon Metagenomics, where you can do basically analyze metagenomics data. So it's not limited to, to SARS-CoV-2, of course, but during the pandemic, it, it will be free of charge. So with this app, you can do a host removal, so to remove all the RNA of the, of the host. And then you have a taxonomic classification using the Kraken app and database, okay? Uh, it includes a rich reporting, uh, so basically with tables uh, listing the microorganisms that have been detected, uh, and it's updated with a, uh, the latest database from 2020. The second app is the Dragon RNA Pathogen Detection, so that is an app that can be used with uh, with the different solution, but is more uh, more useful or more targeted to the to the respiratory panel because it's limited to respiratory viruses. So uh, you have uh, you can use in that uh, either uh, pre uh, pre recorded uh, databases or custom databases as well that you would compare your data to. So it, and it integrates Dragon k Matcher for viral detection. And I will describe that a bit later. And then we have what we call data sharing apps. Uh, so one is the Gizet mission app. So you have seen uh, and you know, I'm, I'm guessing, the Gizet database where a researcher will upload their SARS-CoV-2 uh, sequences. So it's basically this app is there to help you and automate the upload to this database, okay? And we have then the SRA import and submission, which is basically an app that will communicate with NCBI to either import data from NCBI to uh, your uh, to your, the base space uh, account on the cloud or to upload your data from, from your account on the cloud to the NCBI database, okay? So if we look at the, the overall workflow uh, for the different solution, so you have the shotgun metagenomics approach, the enrichment approach, and the amplicon approach. For all of these solution, we have a clarity limbs, so a limb system for sample tracking and management um, that can be used. And you have then the library prep, sequencing, and then the analysis. So I described dragon metagenomics as well as dragon um, RNA pathogen detection, but we also have other apps. But as they are not part of the of the SARS-CoV-2 data toolkit, they won't be free of charge. So that's why I'm not describing them here. We also have a partner that is uh, ID by DNA that provides the Explify platform for metagenomics analysis, uh, and it, they provide more of a clinical report. Uh, kind of data analysis, so uh, and you can uh, you can contact them as well uh, to to have some report example and and can be basically automated from our cloud to directly send your data to uh, to their platform and then you would get a report back on the on our cloud. So a bit more information on uh, on the different apps. So Dragon Metagenomics. Uh, the workflow of this app is as follow. So it starts with dehosting uh, and mapping and alignment of your data. So dehosting is is a 
optional step, uh, but it presents certain advantage uh, that I will I'll show on a later stay, uh, slide. Sorry, you have then a down sampling uh, reads option. So basically, to be able to uh, to do comparative analysis, you can down sample all your all your experiments to the same number of reads. You then have a taxonomic classification with Kraken2 to identify all the microorganisms present in the sample with their latest 2020 database. And you have then uh, uh, reporting and output files, so some uh, QC metrics, plots, clonal plots, uh, organism detection report that I will show at the next slide, and visualization of, of, uh, of the data in base space. So the the report looks as follow in uh, in our cloud. So that's the summary of the anal analysis, and you can see for the different sample the name of the viruses and whether or not they have been detected. So you can see on the first one that. Uh, the, uh, coronavirus 229E was detected, as well as uh, some read associated to Listeria as well. Um, and for example, if you look at the second sample, you can see that a bit more than half of the reads are associated with uh, coronavirus OC43, but you have also other reads that are associated with uh, with coronavirus. So that's a really quick, uh, quick, uh, overview of your data and then of course you have lots of output files that you can look into. So the de-hosting um, uh, option I think it's important to mention so you can see on the on the left uh, analysis without de-hosting so you can see that it's a bit blurry I guess but basically only five percent of the reads are associated with uh, with the virus most of the reads being associated with the host and the analysis time for, for this data takes around 31 minutes for one sample. If you do a geosting step, you can see that most of the reads uh, are associated with coronavirus and your analysis time is now down to 15 minutes. So it's both a way to, uh, to speed your analysis as well as have less data to review because most of your reads will be uh, associated with the virus and you don't have to, to look into the, the host. Of course, if you want to study the host response, then you would not use this de-hosting uh, option. So if we now look at the dragon RNA pathogen uh, detection, so it's quite a it's quite a simple app. Um, it will basically uh, generate your fast queue and then split them into overlapping cameras. So camera, so basically a short sequence of a certain number of uh, nucleotides, and and then it will uh, basically, if you will, blast these cameras against a database and and count the number of of uh, of, uh, of matches and you get these profiles that you can see on the right and where it basically tells you really quickly whether or not it matches a, a certain profile of, of uh, for example SARS-CoV-2 virus or or not okay so that's that's something that is uh, that is really used in in this field for analysis so if you will it's kind of a, a quick and dirty alignment of the data and uh, that's it's a really fast way of analysis uh, of analyzing the data so if we now move to the collaboration tools so our uh, our cloud solution so base based sequence sub uh, enables secure data sharing uh, as it's a cloud it's really easy to to share project and data with your collaborators and of course, we have these uh, these apps free of charge for uh, push button submission to public uh, infectious uh, disease databases, GizAid or NCBI. So, if you look, for example, at the GizAid uh, app, basically you have in your lab you do the sequencing uh, and the library prep. You then upload all your data on the cloud. And using the GISAID submission app, you would create and choose the consensus uh, FASTA sequence, collect metadata, so location, uh, patient information, etc. And then you create the output files that, you in the, that is in the correct format to uh, then automatically send to the GISAID database. 
And then using the GISA database, you have all the epidemiology uh, information, uh, cluster, uh, et cetera, and the transmission information, okay? So now I've described all the surveillance uh, uh, workflow that we have. And now I'm gonna describe a new workflow that we, we just launched, the COVID sick. So as you might have heard uh, in the news, uh, COVID sick is the new assay that we launched and that received the emergency use authorization from the FDA in the US. We, and this is the first NGS test for COVID-19 that received this approval. Okay, so this basically means that it, this assay can be used uh, for detection as a diagnostic uh, during this pandemic. And this is a claim, of course, that is only applicable to the US. But of course, we, we, can, uh, we can distribute this product outside of the US. We cannot claim it as a diagnostic tool, but it's an assay that has exactly the same performance in or out of the US, okay? So if we look at uh, the use of NGS or, or PCR, qPCR uh, with, uh, with this pandemic, uh, you see I described uh, the shotgun metagenomics approach, which is mostly used for identification and characterization of the virus. Um, we have our enrichment workflow uh, that is uh, that can be of course used to detect the virus, but mainly used for evolution monitoring. Uh, if you look, for example, at PCR, qPCR, it is the gold standard for diagnosis, uh, so detection uh, of the virus, and it can also be used, for example, for screening. Um, our implicit, uh, sorry, a COVID sick assay is an assay that we developed uh, to be able to to be used uh, as a additional way to detect the virus and in the US it, we can claim it as a diagnostic tool of course not outside of, of the US but it's also an assay that can be used for evolution monitoring of the disease okay so if we look a bit more at, at this workflow um, it is uh, it is a workflow that is uh, for now dedicated to our high throughput platform so the Novasic so basically the idea of, of this launch is not to uh, to replace PCR of course but the idea is just to provide an additional way to to do testing and to to allow the labs to scale up for example uh, for example we know some labs have uh, have had troubles uh, getting supply for some uh, PCR uh, consumables. And if they have a second way of testing, such as this one, they can basically continue uh, testing or even scale up their testing, adding, adding this uh, technology. So at the moment, as I mentioned, the workflow is only on uh, on uh, Novasic. It's all, only in early access at the moment. Um, so it is to be used for, with the S4 flow cell, which is our largest flow cell on the Novasic, uh, to provide uh, sequencing of up to 3,072 samples per uh, 12, hour, 12 hours of sequencing time. Um, so at a later stage, during so we expect it uh, during July, we will be uh, officially launching and uh, distributing uh, widely the, the, the solution, not only to a restricting number of, of sites. And, and this solution will uh, normally add more options to, to be run. So uh, we expect it to be able to, to run on the SP flow cell of the Novasic, which is the smallest flow cell. And we also expect to have a next seek uh, uh, workflow as well. So, the the runtime, as I mentioned, is 12 hours. Uh, it is fast because it's basically reading uh, only 36 paces. So it is uh, it is a solution that targets the whole uh, genome of the virus and not only uh, a few amplicons. So you can imagine that it can also be used as a, as a surveillance assay because it is basically fast enough uh, to to be used as a detection tool but it also provides more information than than pcr so basically you can also use it uh, for uh, for surveillance um, it also includes uh, human controls uh, in order to provide a, a positive control of each reaction 
Uh, it is a 3072 sample uh, format kit at the moment, and it's for 12 hours uh, runtime. So the, the main feature of, of this assay is that it provides a high accuracy. As I mentioned, it detects 98 uh, targets on the SARS-CoV-2 uh, virus. So if you, if, you, if you are familiar, for example, with the with the Arctic protocol, so it, it's the, the same approach. So tiling uh, uh, amplicons to cover the whole uh, genome of the virus. So of course, it is less prone to to uh, to provide false negative, as you could expect with, from a RT-PCR test that will, for example, target only three amplicons. Um, it has quality control. So uh, with any negative uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, uh, result, you would still have information on the host. So at least you have you have a, a positive control of each reaction, and it it provides a high throughput solution for for any customer that uh, that is able to to handle this volume of sample, of course. So if you look at the the workflow, it's basically in first step, it's uh, an RNA extraction as for uh, the other protocols, cDNA conversion, and then you would split your cDNA in uh, in two pools. Uh, for two uh, different multiplex PCR, and then you would pull them together and prepare your library. In the end of the library prep, you would pull together 384 samples uh, due to the indexing capabilities, and then you would uh, you would uh, uh, quantify the, your library, and then you would uh, you would put it on the on the flow cell and run it on the Novasic. Okay, um, so. If we look a bit more into the details for anyone that is more interesting into the detail of the protocol, uh, so basically uh, you would be loading per lane on the on the instrument uh, 384 samples. So for for uh, to fill up one lane, you would need uh, four times 96 uh, index plates uh, that you would pull all together, and then you would load each lane independently to be able to reach 1536 samples per lane uh, sorry per flow cell and then you would run you could run in dual flow cell run on Novasic in order to be able to reach 3072 samples and that is for for 12 hours run okay as i mentioned uh, we also have uh, an analysis solution uh, that is called the uh, dragon covid sick pipeline um, so the the app uh, the, this pipeline from for now is uh, only available on the server but once we fully launch uh, this kit uh, during summer it will also be available on the cloud so the this app will first uh, do what we call an accelerated demultiplexing thanks to the uh, dragon uh, capabilities uh, accelerated capabilities it will do so uh, it's the step to determine which sequence came from which sample then you have a quality control that checks for sufficient number of reads quality of reads and detection of, of some internal controls uh, third step is the viral detection where you have uh, positive report when the viral amplicon count passes uh, the established threshold. And then you have mutational uh, identification. So what we would use for epidemiological studies where you identify mutations and what the viral sequence is. So this, uh, all these steps would, uh, would roughly take an hour. So you would get from, uh, from sequencing data to report uh, the result for 3072 samples in an hour so if we look at now the, the example of report uh, you have on the report of course the run information and the first quality control so for each lane you have a quality control on the on, on based on the on the indexes set and then you have uh, uh, information on invalid results so it, you can see for these three first samples that the internal control failed so result is invalid and on the following samples you can see that it passed internal controls and the SARS-CoV-2 uh, is detected and then depending on the amount of data you have per sample it will 
uh, give you or not give you a consensus sequence to be used for epidemiology. So basically, as soon as you reach 90% uh, of the genome that is covered, then you have a sequence to be used, for example, to submit to QSA database and to do further analysis. Okay. And that's that's it for for um, my presentation. So if you have any questions, do not hesitate. Um, Manu, I see there are questions in the chat box. It says there can we run less samples per run? So uh, with the, I'm, I'm guessing it's for COVID sick. So yes. the the current workflow is only on S4 flow cell. So. Uh, as you know, most uh, in this case, most of the sequencing cost is based on uh, is the flow cell cost. So you could you could of course run less sample, but if you want to be cost effective, uh, the the ideal is to fill flow cells. So at the moment with S4 flow cell, the number of sample would be 1,536 samples. So that's what you would need to run uh, to be sure to be to be cost effective. Of course. In, in the second wave launch, we will have option to uh, normally run on SP flow cell. So it, I'm, I'm still waiting on confirmation on the number of, of samples, but uh, with uh, knowing that the SP flow cells are two lane, I would expect to be able to multiply 768 samples on the SP flow cell. And then you would have also the option to run on Nexic, and Nexic would be 384 samples. Thank you. It doesn't seem like there are any more questions. Um, however, if there are any questions and you are a little bit shy to post your questions up now, you're more than welcome to email us and then we'll be able to get that information back to you. Perfect. Uh, thanks, Manu, for, for presenting on that, uh, that comprehensive workflow. You're welcome. So that uh, concludes the webinar. I think that's everything from our side. Um, we have recorded the webinar and we will be then sending a link to everybody if you would like to go back to any information that you were unsure of. But if you also would like to ask any additional questions, you're more than welcome to, to email us and we'll be able to address those questions with you on a one, one on one basis. Perfect. So th thanks again for to York, Patrick and Emmanuel for presenting on all the COVID solutions from both Hamilton and Illumina. And thank you all for, again for attending the webinar. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your, your busy work schedule. David, thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.